Okay, um, so uh, next, uh, another Andrew, Andrew Maynard, uh, to talk about the NIF experience. All right, so I'm going to talk about national trusted data repositories for the National Imaging Facility. Uh, so my name's Andrew Maynard, I'm a NIF Informatics Fellow uh, at the Centre for Microscopy Characterisation Analysis at the University of Western Australia. So, very quickly, what is NIF? Uh, the Australian National Imaging Facility is a $130 million project providing state-of-the-art imaging capability of animals, plants and materials for the Australian research community. A little map there to the right shows the various nodes of the National Imaging Facility around the country. Now, why is NIF interested in trusted data repositories? Well, the imaging equipment such as MRI, PET, CT scanners are capable of producing vast amounts of valuable research data. So we're interested in maximising those research outcomes and to do so, uh, the data must be stored securely and must have its uh, quality verified and should be accessible to the wider research community. From the core trust seal point of view, why trusted data repositories? Well, firstly, to be able to share data. Secondly, to preserve the initial investment in collecting that data. Thirdly, to ensure that the data remain useful and meaningful into the future. And the last one, importantly, is that funding authorities are increasingly uh, requiring continued access to data that's produced by projects they fund. All right, now I want to talk specifically about the NIF, RDS, ANS Trusted Data Repositories project, officially titled Delivering Durable, Reliable, High Quality Image Data for the National Imaging Facility. Now, broad aim of the project uh, was to enhance quality, durability, and reliability of data that's generated by the NIF. Now, by quality, we mean the data has to be captured according to what we call the NIF agreed process. Durable means that the data has to have guaranteed availability for 10 years. And reliable means that the data has to be useful for future researchers. So it has to be stored in uh, one or more open data formats and with sufficient evidential metadata. So we know how it was created, what the state of the instrument was at the time of creation and so on. The NIF nodes involved with the University of Western Australia, University of Queensland, University of New South Wales and Monash University. And in the project, we limited our scope to MRI data, but essentially the results are generalizable to other modalities. And in fact, uh, we've already progressed to uh, micro CT. So key outcomes from the project include the NIF agreed process to obtain trusted data from NIF instruments. I'll talk more about that shortly. Uh, the second is requirements necessary and sufficient for a basic NIF trusted data repository service. The third were exemplary repo exemplar repository services across all four participating nodes. And then the last one were self assessments against the core trustworthy data repositories requirements from core trust seal. So the NIF agreed process requiring high quality data. This essentially lists requirements that have to be satisfied to obtain high quality data, which we call NIF certified data, that's then suitable for ingestion in a NIF trusted data repository service. We mandate that repository data must be organized by project ID because project IDs will persist with time, whereas user IDs don't, users come and go. Now to be NIF certified, the data must have been acquired on a NIF compliant instrument, more about that shortly. It has to possess NIF minimal metadata, so that includes cross-reference to relevant instrument quality control data. It has to include the native data generated by the instrument in proprietary format and include conversions to one or more open data formats. So the requirements for a NIF trusted data repository service, we uh, drew upon the core trust seal uh, requirements in the left column that you see there and additionally added some NIF requirements. So one of them you've seen already, the project ID requirement, but we also require an instrument ID uh, requirement. Uh, quality control requirement, authentication by Australian Access Federation requirement, interoperability, that is we should be able to uh, upload data from one repository to another, redeployability, it should be possible to deploy the uh, service from one NIF node to another, and a service requirement that essentially we have a help desk uh, responding to requests regarding the repository. 
So in a nutshell, if we have a look at this diagram, if we can concentrate on the right hand side, uh, if we have, uh, we've got the four sites, UWA, UQ, UNSW and Monash. So TrueDAT at that particular site represents the trusted data repository. Login is via the Australian Access Federation. So that means on any of the sites, it will direct you back to your institutional login page and use institutional credentials. As I mentioned before, data sets are organized by project ID. A data set is associated with an instrument and provided the NIF agreed process has been uh, followed, then a NIF certification flag uh, indicating that it is certified is also included with the data set. And the repository has a record for the instrument. The instrument itself is linked to another special project called the Quality Control Project uh, and also a handle to a record in Research Data Australia. So looking at the bottom of the screen, you can see Research Data Australia is a data and service discovery portal pro provided by ANS. So we put into that uh, an instrument description, that's both hardware and software, and uh, there's a unique handle to that record. If we look at top left now, at the instrument PC or client PC, uh, data is uploaded according to the NIF agreed process. So the top box above NIF agreed process, the user data set has to have minimal metadata. That's the project ID, instrument ID, date and time, the data was acquired, implicit metadata that's in the proprietary data, the native data from the instrument and conversions to one or more open data formats. Uh, the instrument operator can also upload uh, data to the quality control project, which includes uh, the quality, stand, quality control standard operating procedure, which of course can be updated over time, and quality control data. So what this means is that when a user uploads data to the repository, there's an automatic link to the quality control project, and so it's possible to know the state of the instrument at the time that the data was acquired. This is what the portal looks, looks like for TrueDAT at UWA. Uh, so we have uh, based this on the MyTardis platform, which uh, originated at Monash uh, with several extensions developed during the project, and we use uh, Docker technology to be able to easily deploy at different sites. So this allows easy instrument integration, simple data sharing, and user-controlled publishing of data sets. Okay, now I come to the comparison uh, of all the self-assessments against the core trust seal uh, requirements. So all four sites did their own self-assessments for their respective repositories. Uh, and what we can see here in this table, so this shows the first eight uh, such requirements, is that essentially we uh, independently uh, arrived at the a fairly, fairly similar level of assessment, except for the cases there where we marked in blue. And uh, so the third one, we talk about continuity of access. Uh, so uh, Monash here believed that uh, at this point in time that that was not uh, assured, whereas the other three sites did. So I should point out this self-assessment is a statement of the reality, the situation at the point in time that the self-assessment was completed. Uh, and then there was a difference as well at uh, row four, which is uh, requirement four, confidentiality, confidentiality and ethics. Monash uh, have this fully implemented, uh, whereas the other three sites are in various stages of, of getting this to be implemented. And then the other differences uh, with the remaining requirements, uh, some differences with respect to data storage, uh, documented storage procedures, uh, workflows, and data discovery and uh, identification. Post-funding, so the project hasn't finished just because the funding has finished, so we intend to maintain the services for 10 years now, and we uh, plan to meet quarterly uh, to make sure that this happens. We are integrating additional instruments. As I said, we're uh, adding uh, uh, micro CT instruments at the moment. Uh, we will create a project web portal. So we have a single landing page for all these trusted data repository services. We're planning new national and international service deployments, including one in Turku, Finland. Uh, we're refining and improving the uh, trusted data repository portal. And we intend uh, progressing the to core trust seal certification. So very quickly, benefits of the NIF trusted data repository services for NIF users in the broader community means reliable, durable access to data, improved reliability of research outputs and provenance associated with it, making NIF data more fair, easier linkages between publications and data and stronger research partnerships, 
For NIF, it means improved data quality, improved international reputation, ability to run multi-centre trials, and for the various research institutions, enhanced reputation management, a means by which to comply with the draft code for responsible research, and enhanced ability to engage in multi-centre imaging research projects. And with that, uh, I thank you. Uh, and I list on the page here the various project leads at the various nodes. So thank you very much.